Now let's deal with a lot. A lot. We all have a a a, a lot or a lot in our lives. Someone that maybe we bring along because we, you know, maybe they're related to us and. We figure that if they only come along with us and if they experience, the more they experience, the better they will get. And then we find out that the more they experience, the the more that they are just who they are. You understand? And it doesn't really change anything. Yet, we were given a call, as Abraham was, to to lay to, to, to go for yourself, to go for the benefit of you and your house to forsake your country, to leave your country, to leave your kindred, and to leave your father's house. But now, the next portion of this is where Abraham or Abram and, and Lot had to divide the land. So now we're up to the third part of this. And the third part is connected with the fourth part, where we have the war of the four, the war of the four kings, against the five, because we find out that Abram, Abraham had to rescue. Now, at this particular time, he is still known as Abram, right, as Abram or Abram, and we get into chapter 13, where it says, Abram returns to the land and the altar. Now, we touched briefly on the altar. The altar is the Bethel. You understand? Or Bethel, what's known as Bethel, but really Bethel is Beit, or the Beit, the Bet, the Beit Ale, or the the house of God, the 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 simplest, and we can say the the, the rutical church. So when we speak about Bethel, Bethel is actually the house of God, or is in that sense the original, the Abrahamic. In other words, Bethel is the Abrahamic church the house of God, or you can interpret it by extension, the daughter of God. You understand, the daughter of God, but literally the house of God. Now, this is the first four verses of chapter, of chapter 13, right? And uh, there's, there's an interesting metaphysics if you look up the names. If they come across these Hebrew and non-English names, let's see, break names, it's good to look these things up, especially in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, and it can add more context and clarity to begin to see the word spiritually, you understand, to see the word spiritually, and more um, resonance and, and, and relevance even in our lives. So we're not just looking at the so-called history of the patriarch from a historical perspective, but we're using this as an instruction, a spiritual template and a guide, even for us according to our consciousness level, you understand, and according to our ability to Kabbalah or Kabbalah, our ability to receive. Now, when we get to this third part, or Abram and Lot, Abram had to separate from Lot. Now, the scriptures tell us a couple of important things that Abram, Sarai, and Lot, they returned to the altar near Bethel in Genesis chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. And Abram and Lot now had so many sheep and cattle that the land could not support them both. And the herdsmen, they quarreled. It, it says, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. Now, when it says Lot also, he went with Abram. In other words, he went along. He wasn't called. You understand? He wasn't really on the mission, but he kind of tagged along. We call it like those who are, we say like the Rastafari, the bandwagon riders, those who are riding the bandwagon, maybe for the accessory, like maybe the herb or maybe the reggae music, or the ice gold and green, the dreadlocks, the culture. But it's not really about the covenant with this type. And as you study even the metaphysical Bible dictionary, the name Lot or Lot, you'll find out even a little bit more. So put that down as your homework or study work this, this week as our 
Torah portion reading and feeding continues. Now, it says, The land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. Now, that's, that's a key significance, too. That at this particular time, it tells us that the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Now, what is, what is interesting is that if you go back to verse 6 of the previous chapter, chapter 12 of Genesis, it says, And Abram passed through the land to the place of Sichem, to the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Now, some of the background on the Canaanites and the whole land conflict and why the Canaanites and those tribes had to be removed is because they settled in land that was not allotted to them. They settled in somebody else's land. They took somebody else's land. This is also another true, a key indicator of who these people are spiritually even in this modern time. They came to land that was allotted to somebody else, and they took it for themselves. So think about who or what kind of people do those sort of things. And you will understand that the Canaanite, the word Canaanite is interesting too because in the prophet, in the Haftarah and the Beam and the Biyat, it says that the Canaanite would no longer be in the land, and then that's interpreted as the merchant. So the Canaanite connects with the old-time pirates, the old-time pirates or the merchants. Now, Abram said to Lot, or Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brethren. That's another way you can tell that Abram was black. He says, we be brethren. Not that we are brethren. No, we be. Yo, we be brethren. You know, that's right in your Bible. We be brethren. Verse 8. Is not the whole land before thee? I mean, don't we have all of this? You know what I'm saying? Separate thyself. <laughs> Abraham is now saying, separate yourself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. He gave, so Abraham was, was such a character, such an individual. He was about that peace. He was about that. He wasn't into all that, that, that strife and chicka chick. You know, he said, listen, there shouldn't be no strife between I and I because we'd be brethren. You understand? If, you know, separate yourself from me and your husband from mine. If you go over here, I'll go over there. If you go over there, I'll go over here. I mean, come on. Let's, let's, let's not have no war. Now, here in verse, from verse 10 and 11, Lot's first step in backsliding. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordanos, the Jordan, that was well watered everywhere. So even then they look for, you know, cattle and cattlemen. They look for water, you know, and the water rights. Before Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Yahweh. This is key. It says that this place was well watered, you understand, before Yahweh had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Then it says, even as the garden of the Lord, even as the garden, we're talking about the, the Ganetta Aiden like the land of Egypt. So now it's comparing the garden of the Lord with the land of Egypt as thou comest to Zoar. To Zoar, another key significant name to look up metaphysically in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Now, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordanos, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. They say that's Lot's first step in backsliding. Now, Lot's second step in backsliding, verses 12 and 13. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. So 
So he saw Sodom or Sodom even then. And he said, something going on. I like that city, man. They got a lot of good stuff going on. I need to be a little close to them, you know. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before yod hey wow hey before Yahweh exceedingly. But now these folks that lied, obviously, that Yetzer Hara'a was somehow there in Lot, that he inclined himself, you understand, to be close and near to these folks. Sound familiar? Sound like what ones and ones do, do today? You know what I'm saying? Though they say they're about the righteousness, but they, you know, they want to get down with the men of Sodom who were wicked and sinners before Yahweh exceedingly. So that was his second back, backsliding, right? Because it says, Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, but Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitch his tent toward or in the direction of Sodom. Now, the Abrahamic covenant, the land given, natural posterity is promised. And Yahweh, verse 14, said to Abram, after that Lot was separated from him. Now, after Lot was, was gone from, from Abraham, it's almost like now Yahweh is speaking to him again. In, in a sense, once you get that negative, you know, the, those negative folks, you understand? And they don't have to be super negative, but they, they still are not, they are not motivated by what the eye is motivated by, by seeking to do the will of our Father. Once you remove that, you, you, the spiritual meditation, you can like hear the small, still voice again. You can hear the voice of Yah speaking, you know, for that chicka chick, for that strife and argument and, and complaining and whining. You can't hear that for that drama, too much drama. When you got that drama out of his life, he can now hear Yahweh's voice. He could, Yahweh could speak to him. And Yahweh said, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward, and westward. So now we get the sign of the cross. He tells them to look north, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So now the promise of the land was further fulfilled once he got out that negative, that, that negative um, uh, fleshy, as as we say, Rastafari, like fleshy, you know, like your flesh and blood. Once he got the fleshy out the way, now that promise of Yah could come about. Makes us think how much fleshy ones that we need to get out the way too, or separate ourselves from them, so Yahweh can speak to us properly. He's probably speaking to us, but we can't hear because too much drama. There's too much drama, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. If a man can number, now they tell us that now they have computers and machines and technology where they actually can number a lot of microscopic sort of things. So perhaps the seed can be numbered. But the fact is, not that it can't be numbered, but the fact is that there'll be enough there's enough of I and I. And even in this present time, there's enough. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it to thee. So he said, he said, promenade, promenade. Sure, sure. Sure, sure, I You know, walk through it. Promenade. All of that I'm going to give to you. It's something like what happened with um, Joshua. And we have Joshua's testimony where Joshua was told that wherever the sole of his foot touched, that was the land that Yahweh Loheinu had given to us, Baruch Hu. Then Abraham re removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar to yod heh wow -He, or in his time, he knew Yahweh by the name of El Shaddai, or the Almighty, the Almighty God. Now, the name's Mamre. Mamre is clearly an Egyptian, Egyptian name. Hebron means unity or brotherhood, which is very important to Dawit, 
began his rule. He began to reign at Hebron for, the, for those seven years before the rest of the tribes besides Judah recognized the monarchy. And there's a, there's a resonance for us in this particular time. Now, that is the basic uh, story concerning um, Lot and, 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 and Abraham. Now we come to the war that was between the four kings and the five. Now we're going to come to a period of warfare. Now the interesting thing about this is that Abraham had to deliver and rescue Lot. Yep, Abraham now had to rescue Lot. And this is what happens. These sort of fleshies get themselves in trouble. And it's always I and I that is now coming to their rescue. You understand? Coming to their rescue. But then think back on the earlier part of this reasoning where when Yahweh said to lay te with ah. He, he, this is singular. Lek lika. This is singular. Go for yourself. Go for your own benefit. Come out of her, my people. You understand? Speaking to each of us individually. Not looking to, uh, uh, you want to come out? You ready to come out? No, speaking to you. It's speaking to I and I and I individually. And it came to pass in the days of Amra Fel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elasar, 